From the world's longest waterways to our streams, brooks, and underground springs, rivers flow all around our incredible planet, and many of them end up flowing into swamps, and both of them have always been vital to human life, carrying fresh water to people and animals all over the world, and they're super powerful forces of nature too. Yet the more we explore them, the more secrets get revealed, and as you're about to see, the findings can be shocking. It's really roughly welded right. on, you know, don't make it refined when it doesn't need to be. This is all about numbers. It's not what you would expect. 15 most terrifying things found in rivers and swamps. <coughs> Swallowing sinkhole. What was the Bayou Corn sinkhole disaster? You're looking at it. In Bayou Corn, Louisiana, an environmental disaster led to a sinkhole. A drilling company accidentally caused the collapse of a massive cave over 5,000 feet below this bayou. In the course of drilling for concentrated salt, the cave's destruction sucked in massive amounts of water, opening up a 37-acre sinkhole that destroyed trees, boats, and homes. The collapse also caused oil and methane gas from the underground to rise, appearing as visible bubbles on the surface of the water. Residents reported seeing methane gas bubbles appear in puddles for weeks after the incident. The industrial catastrophe disrupted the geology of the local area to such an extent that small earthquakes and other seismic events rocked the community for months after the cave collapse. Eventually, authorities had no choice but to issue an evacuation order for the area. Despite the obvious negligence, incompetence, and irresponsibility of the drilling company, most residents of Bayou Corn did not direct their anger at the company that was directly responsible for the destruction of their community. Instead, they blamed the government. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. What they captured in a river left scientists speechless, and judging from this image, we're looking at the tiny skeleton of a creature we never thought actually existed. In folklore, a fairy is one of a class of supernatural beings, generally conceived as having a tiny human form with wings and possessing magical powers. Fairies are highly connected to nature and take care of the natural world or what some might call the elemental world. They bring the spring and help the nature kingdom wake up from its long winter slumber. Could this be actual proof that fairies are real? Look at the coin near the specimen. You really get a sense of just how delicate such a creature could be. If the legends are to be believed, there are over a thousand varieties of fairies throughout legend and lore around the world. Almost every culture has some form of fairy beings who interact with humans. Some cause havoc while others protect or help. Are you believing after seeing something like this? Let the world know in the comments below with the hashtag missing topic. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> Nile Crocs in the USA. Florida has a reputation for exotic and deadly wildlife. But this? Three Nile crocodiles were found near Miami, 6,000 miles from where the huge predators are normally found. One of the Florida captives was even caught while relaxing on a house porch in Miami. The others were merely frolicking in the Everglades. The reptiles can grow up to 20 feet long, weigh as much as a small car, and have a reputation for being ferocious man-eaters, with an estimated 200 people a year meeting their demise in the jaws of a Nile crocodile. The crocodiles, normally found in sub-Saharan African marshes, swamps, and rivers, aren't fussy over their dining options either. They have no problem feasting on zebras, porcupines, small hippos, and other crocodiles that cross their path. DNA analysis has confirmed that three animals captured in South Florida between 2009 and 2014 are true Nile crocodiles. They found that the crocodiles were related to each other, but not related to other Nile crocodiles kept at Disney's Animal Kingdom or other Florida attractions. This means that the crocodiles were probably released by an unlicensed wildlife dealer or escaped from someone's private zoo. <coughs> Skunk Ape For centuries, almost every continent on our planet has passed down legends of hairy, ape-like bipedal creatures, including the Yeti, Sasquatch, the Abominable Snowman, and in Florida Swampland, there's the fabled Skunk Ape, a 6-foot, six 6-inch, six 450-pound, hairy, smelly ape that roams the Everglades. Or so believers say. Sightings have been detailed in newspaper reports dating back decades. The first ever sightings of the skunk ape were reported throughout the 1960s and 1970s, and sightings are still happening today if this video is any indication. 
While canoeing in a swamp outside of Tampa, Florida, the person filming spotted something walking and diving in a gator-infested swamp. Natural, their first thought was that it was a bear. Most sightings of a skunk ape, like the Bigfoot sightings, can be dismissed as black bear sightings. A black bear can stand upright, making it appear like another animal entirely. Bears are also known to rummage through the garbage bins, which could explain the smell so associated with this creature. The only problem is that Lettuce Lake Park is a 240-acre park that bears tend to stand clear of. We know bears can walk on their hind legs too, but this does not resemble a bear at all. It doesn't help matters that the United States National Park Service considers the skunk ape to be a hoax. <laughs> Chena River Monster Many people were convinced Alaska had its very own sea monster recently when government officials captured on video a mysterious thing moving its way through the Chena River. Alaska's Bureau of Land Management posted a video online that shows something moving back and forth, a long ice-crusted object slowly slinking its way through the river current. Speaking with local news, the government employee said he spotted the thing when he was taking photos of the ice forming on the river. It never fully revealed itself, the bureau employee explained. I initially thought and several people thought it could be some sort I initially thought and several people thought it could be some rope that snagged on the bottom of the river with chunks of ice. Many netizens commented on the bureau's video, speculating what the mysterious thing was. One person commented that it was just weeds and debris on the top of water that have snow and ice on top. The current is making it move like a fish gator ice monster. Others thought it was a sturgeon or a Greenland shark. The ever so elusive beaver gator was a popular and hilarious guess. Turns out the thing was most likely rope stuck to a bridge pier and covered in soft, slush-like ice crystals that form on the water. <laughs> Black Magic Jar Anybody can start magnet fishing. All you need is a strong magnet, rope, and a bit of patience. You just throw your rope into the water and pull in whatever your magnet attracts. Wait, but you never know what you're gonna find. So, see for yourself. If these TikTok videos are any indication, the rivers and swamps around Detroit, Michigan are beloved by practitioners of dark magic. Magnet fishermen keep pulling spell jars out of the water. For fans of the dark arts, the elusive spell jar serves a number of purposes. The first is that it keeps the magic concentrated and prevents it from escaping before the spell has been completed. The other nice feature of a jar or bottle spell is its portability. Whether it's buried under a doorstep, tucked into a hollow tree, or dropped in the water, spell jars like these were usually made of pottery or glass and included sharp objects such as pins and bent nails. Random fact. Some of these jars contained fingernail clippings and even urine as well. Magnet fishing's popularity skyrocketed when hobbyists started sharing videos like these of their unusual findings. And as you can see, magnet fishermen are hauling spell jars up pretty frequently. <laughs> Ghost forest. Like all living organisms, trees die. But what's happening here is not normal. As storms and droughts increase and sea levels rise from our changing climate, forested wetlands up and down the Atlantic coast are transforming vibrant ecosystems to forests filled with dead or dying trees. From New Jersey to Florida, large patches of trees are dying simultaneously, and saplings aren't growing to take their place. Not good. Rising sea levels are making wetlands wetter in many parts of the world. It also makes them saltier and allows salt water to seep into wetland soils. Salts move through groundwater when fresh water is depleted, such as during droughts too. Then it moves through canals and ditches, penetrating inland with help from the winds and high tides. It's the perfect salty storm that creates these ghost forests. Dead trees with pale trunks, devoid of leaves and limbs. These are the telltale signs of high salt levels in the soil. If the rate of decline continues, these forested wetlands will reach the point of no return within the century, experts believe. Then salt water will then move on to inundate farm fields, people's homes, drinking water. The accelerating spread of these ghost forests has ecologists alarmed and eager to understand what effect they'll have regionally and globally. <coughs> Megafires From Indonesia to Botswana, from Scotland to North Carolina, peat megafire destroys habitats, clog the air with haze, and self-accelerate climate change. As the world warms and certain regions dry, 
So does the superfuel known as peat. It's basically concentrated carbon from dead plants and it burns not at all like your typical wildfire. Instead of sending towering flames upward, a peat fire burns in the opposite direction, smoldering deep in the soil. Because of this accumulation of fuel, once ignited, smoldering peat fires burn for very long periods of time, months, years, despite extensive rains, weather changes, or firefighting attempts. Indeed, smoldering is the dominant combustion phenomena in mega fires of peatlands. Smoldering fires contribute considerably to global greenhouse gas emissions and result in widespread ecosystem destruction. And sadly, temperate and boreal regions, droughts, drainage, and changes in land use are thought to be the main causes. Possible ignition events can be natural, like lightning or volcanic eruption, even accidental ignition. And on occasion, these mega fires have been ignited on purpose. Bog butter. From Ireland to Scotland, even on the American East Coast, big chunks of ancient cheese have been turning up in rivers and swamps. Many examples are found in museums too. These buttery discoveries can be thousands of years old. And in most cases, this bog butter is still edible. It's usually found in pots, wooden containers, animal skins, or wrapped in bark. So what exactly is it made of? It's usually butter made from cow's milk. When experts analyzed nine samples of the butter, they found that six of them were indeed dairy products, while the other three were from animals. Perhaps rendered fat stored for later use. What makes it special was its age. After spending so much time in the cool, damp peat, it starts to take on the appearance and consistency of wax. The cool, low-oxygen, high-acid environment of the places these chunks were buried made a perfect natural refrigerator. Seeing as butter, seeing as butter was a valuable commodity in ancient times and was used to pay taxes, saving it for times of drought, famine, or war was essential. Looking at over 274 instances of bog butter from the Iron Age to medieval times, early people sunk the butter in bogs simply to preserve it or protect it from thieves. <laughs> Monkey Lab Island. In 1974, in the remote jungles of Liberia, an American nonprofit and idealistic young scientist was setting in motion what years later would become what many now call the real life planet of the apes. Today, the jungle wilderness is now home to more than 60 chimps who are notoriously protective of its shores. It's a story that seems straight out of a movie. They were captured from the wild back in the 1970s in a shady deal with local poachers who sold the baby chimps to an American research facility. The chimps were injected with various forms of hepatitis and a host of other illnesses. Once they tested positive for one of the diseases, the animals would be transferred to one of six different islands that, thanks to chimpanzees' innate physiological inability to swim, were perfect for keeping the infected subjects away from the regular population. The lab encountered growing resistance to animal testing. Eventually, the anti-testing outcry reached the highest levels of the U.S. federal government, and the National Institute of Health stepped in. They instituted a moratorium on breeding research chimps and declared that most chimp testing did more harm than good, but the monkeys remain. Sinking House This three-story building in France looks like the victim of a flood that at some point swept it away but sometimes appearances can be deceiving. Known simply as the House in the Loire, it was actually placed there deliberately by a company that specializes in salvaging wrecks. At the request of a French artist, if you walk along the River Loire, you'll find this tilted building located right in the middle of the river. Although the house looks strange during the day, at night it becomes downright creepy. There's a light that turns on in one of the rooms, which isn't really something you'd expect to see in an abandoned house in the middle of a river but it's a popular destination for many river cruises here. Interestingly, the abandoned house is actually a replica of a former inn. The artist produced an almost identical replica out of cast concrete and had it placed on the right bank of it, but strong currents and high tides caused it to capsize, so the building was moved 15 miles to a new location. It still sits there, with the water lapping endlessly at its edges and the breeze blowing through its open windows. It was created as part of an art exhibition which invited a number of international artists to create large-scale works inspired by the river and its nearby estuary. <laughs> Disappearing Island The Isle of John Charles, off the coast of Louisiana, is literally sinking into the ocean. 
Families who have lived there for generations are being forced away from their land as it slowly vanishes underwater in the Louisiana Bayou. In the past six decades, this island has lost 98% of its land, with a 5 by 11 mile island shrinking to a mere quarter mile by two miles. There's one road into the island that floods at least once a week so that no cars can pass. This leaves the people of the isle with a difficult decision to leave their homes and livelihoods. The community here was meant to move to a new location together to preserve the community, but many are moving on their own while others refuse to abandon their land and culture. Many factors led to the destruction of the island. Dams and levees were created through the Mississippi River, which disrupted the sediment flow that naturally prevented mass erosion. The nearby oil industry created more deltas and channels within the local wetlands, with the drilling hurting plant structures that previously provided more natural barriers to erosion. Coupled with rising sea levels from global climate change, the island effectively sank. Rhinoceros viper Deadly venomous, there's no doubt that this snake is one of the most unusual in the world. They're called rhino vipers and can be found all over Africa and the lowland regions of deep rainforest, where regular floods have made the soil damp and moist. Also known as river jack snakes, the cool thing is that their coloration is an adaptive feature. The degree of light and dark colors depends on where it lives. They're well camouflaged in the leaf litter. These terrestrial snakes can even at times be seen climbing or resting on trees, but the rhinoceros viper's head is one of its most distinguishing characteristics. Triangular in shape, there are horns above each nostril. This nightmare snake is known to have the longest fangs of any venomous snake. They can strike strongly and quickly, both sideways and in a forward direction. They wait for their prey and generally strike only when the prey comes into their vicinity. Their most common foods include small mammals, toads, fish, and frogs. Rhinoceros viper snake bites inject a small amount of highly poisonous venom into their prey, destroying the circulatory system and causing internal bleeding. But luckily, you don't really see these vipers near people or in urban communities. <laughs> Forgotten tank You're looking at a bit of history being dragged out of the mud. The T-34 is a tank that entered service in 1941. It's well known for its deployment alongside the Russian military during the Second World War. Over the generations, more than 80,000 of these tanks would be produced for use by the Soviets as well as communist allies at the time, including China, Cuba, and North Korea. They were specifically designed to deal with savage winters and harsh, snowy, muddy terrain. However, the tanks were prone to sinking because of their narrow tracks, and that's probably why it remained here in this muddy swamp for so long. It settled in 12 feet of water and six more feet of mud covered it. So during a two-week period, volunteers from a local diving club washed the silt from the tank. Then it was freed from its swampy resting place. Imagine how much horsepower is required to get these things out of a swamp after being buried for over half a century. There are only a few machines out there that can successfully pull an object that weighs this much. The T-34 was then taken to a war museum and they were even able to start the diesel engine even after all this time. Plane Crash Somewhere in the woods of Rhode Island, sitting alone in a swamp, are the abandoned remains of a plane crash from over 40 years ago. Carrying a pilot, a co-pilot, and four passengers, this twin-engine plane took off from Massachusetts, bound for New Jersey on November 22, 1971. But things didn't go as planned, as you can see, as the flight was passing over and encountered bad weather. Just as the aircraft was making its way across Rhode Island, passengers reported seeing ice forming on the wings. That ice caused the left engine to fail, and the plane could not keep a safe level of altitude. The pilot radioed help and requested landing instructions, but it didn't make it. The aircraft went down in this thickly wooded swampy area. There were so many trees as they went down that the wings were ripped from the plane, causing it to flip upside down. The fuselage was cracked open on impact. Local newspapers report that the woods were so dense where they crashed that a helicopter had to lower a doctor to the site to administer aid to the passengers. The rest of the rescue team had to trudge through two feet of mud for half a mile just to reach the crash. The plane was left at the crash site, and there it remains to this day. Alligator Gar Gars are distinctive fish with long, cylindrical-shaped bodies and heads with elongated jaws and needle-like teeth. It would be easy to mistake this creature for an alligator. 
but don't let the large teeth and fearsome appearance fool you. It poses no particular risk of attack on humans. The alligator gar is one of the largest of all the freshwater fish, with one measuring 10 feet long and weighing 280 pounds. The largest alligator gar ever caught weighed in at 327 pounds. It was captured in Mississippi. Exceptionally large alligator gars are most common in Texas as well. Fossil evidence shows the species have been around for almost 100 million years. As they've retained the morphological characteristics of their ancestors, they're referred to as living fossils. And like alligators, this ancient family of fish has severe primitive features, such as skeletal remains that contain a great deal of cartilage inside of a bone. Also, their vertebrae are similar to those seen in reptiles. This type of vertebrae is found in no other fish species. Finally, gars have a swim bladder connected to their esophagus, which acts like a lung. This allows gars to breathe air in waters with little oxygen. The scales of the alligator gar are so hard that humans have used them for breastplate armor, carve arrowheads, even to build luggage. It's not only the oceans of the world that are full of mystery. Rivers and swamps can hold their own too when it comes to terror. But don't be afraid, there's a lot of good stuff going on down there. And speaking of good stuff, there's more of that coming right up. <laughs>